Uh, the first is to look at tax consolidation and accounting issues, uh, including the major issues of tax risk management, important in this very uncertain environment we're in at the moment. The presenter, we're very privileged to have uh, presenting on this, um, Steph Mason. Um, Steph Mason, a uh, partner in Ernst & Young, uh, has a very unique skill set. He's got over 30 years' experience in advising corporate clients on tax matters across all areas of tax and also has a very stellar level of awareness around tax accounting. Uh, he specialises in tax reporting for US GAAP, IFRS, um, Australian Accounting um, and Tax Function Performance, um, uh, is involved directly and supports engagement teams across many operational risk management and reporting consequences of uh, taxation. He leads the Melbourne Tax Practice Support in this area and has a heavy involvement with audit issues. Um, so um, over to you, Steph. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's my task today to take you through what the implications of these new rules are from a, an accounting and reporting perspective. So I thought I'd do this in a, in a number of stages. We'll look firstly at the amendments themselves or the announced changes and what it really means from a reporting perspective for, um, for everyone. Also have a quick look at um, just some practical issues that, that will come up and the way in which the other 2010 amendments that are in place might affect you from a tax entry and exit uh, cost setting process. And finally, just a, a few comments on reportable tax positions, what they mean in the context of this and uh, what you might want to think about in terms of reacting to this from a for your clients or for yourselves. So I've got a fair amount of material to cover and I'm happy to take the odd question if someone wishes to focus on a particular thing. The session is for you and uh, I would prefer to address the issues rather than um, just go through my material um, on a theoretical basis. From the outset, Tax consolidation over the course of the last few years as it's been implemented since 2002 has had a heavy reliance, if you like, on the purchase price allocation process that's uh, taken for accounting purposes. And these, what these new rules seem to do is put more distance between the tax process of allocable cost amount and the PPA process that the accountants go through. And as a consequence of the need to drill down and break down your, what you are acquiring in a far more granular level to determine the tax consequence, what we're going to find is more and more uh, pressure being put into that period when we're working through the acquisition itself, the price you pay. Everyone will want to know the tax consequences that arise from a particular transaction. And secondly, the um, way in which you report it. So the purchase price allocation process itself will become more complicated, particularly if you have to get valuations for some of the components of contracts that we were talking about there in categories one, two and three, as we heard about earlier. So the, the, the fundamental standard that applies, as everyone knows, is IAS 12 or AASB 112. That uh, requires us to measure current and deferred taxes at the uh, rates that are currently applicable and will be applicable when those particular differences are, are, are recovered later on down the track. And, and it also relies on the fact um, that you have to interpret the tax position in context of substantively enacted law. So what does that mean in the context of us today? Substantively enacted in our environment in Australia would require us to have law and have that law having been passed by the House of Representatives and probably in the context of the way in which our Senate is structured as well, it would need to go through the Senate before you could say something is substantively enacted. Now, until it's substantively enacted, you cannot take it into account in measuring either your current tax or your deferred tax asset or your deferred tax liability. So the media announcements that, we've, uh, that we heard, uh, that we've just had, are not substantively enacted. 
nor will